Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, I've got my little RTL dongle plugged into my PC. Though so you can get these and plug them into Macs, Raspberry Pis, even some smartphones as well to work with. Um, I'm plugging them into my PC. Now, with these things, they've got kind of a, a limited range. 25 megahertz to 1.7 gigahertz basically. It's just under Wi-Fi really. But there's still a lot of functionality, a lot of things you can do with these things. Uh, especially with the, the loads of actually decent software and stuff like that. Um, now I've had this one for a few years now and it's done me good. I probably wouldn't buy this one again. Unless I was going to use it on a phone or something because the size of it, it gets small and gets quite hot. Plastic case as well, not the greatest one interference and there's a few other things as well but it was pretty cheap done me well i still use it today uh, i'd probably go something more like uh, the rtl sdr one uh, the version 3 probably you normally get like a, a little antenna or antennas with this one um stuff like this you can i think this this kit here is about 30 40 pounds or something like that um but you can get like cheaper sdrs it depends what you want really but that's kind of sort of a better one uh, better case and stuff like that um, as you see I've got this little antenna here now it's not obviously set up in the, the best place possible so I my desk get quite a lot of interference on here but uh, the good thing about uh, these dongles uh, they were sort of like a TV receiver so you can watch TV and radio on your PC basically um, the problem with it is um, when you first plug them in normally Windows tries to install the kind of default drivers for it for one of these devices which is uh, not always helpful what you got to do is let it install that driver and if you go to this website here it tells you how to do it there's also kind of like uh, walkthrough guides on YouTube and that you've got to let it install the TV sort of drivers and then download a program, run it, don't install them, and then install the this program here, this Zardag or whatever it's called, and, and it just replaces the driver. And then after you've done that once, it, it should work fine with all the software. Bit of a pain, but there we go. Once you've done it, it's done. And obviously, this is a great, useful resource. This uh, RTL SDR.com. It's got. If you look at the software now. It gives you a like, list of all the software supported by them. That's a good program if, if you want to actually zoom in and decode actual signals and stuff like that. And stuff like that. But today we're really looking at the uh, turning it into a spectrum analyzer. Now with this, um, you don't actually. Uh, where we go at the bottom? Normally it's sold with the RF Explorer. But the actual the free version software will actually recognize your RTL dongle. So you can actually use it as a, and it's free as well. There's a pro version, well, I'm not sure if it works with the pro version, it gives you more features. But the free version is quite good and gives you an idea of what's happening. Okay. Alright, so I've already plugged this in, sorted out the drivers for it, works fine. I've downloaded the uh, RF Explorer Touchstone software. And just get that in there now. And I've got this up and running now. Now, as you can see, if you go to this drop down menu, you've got some kind of already bands in there. Obviously, I can't use like the 2.4 gigahertz, the 5 gigahertz band because it's out of the range of that dongle. Um, but like the FM band, you can use, and which is always good to, to actually use. So, if I just start up, obviously, with this, the dongle, it's not the fastest thing to, to to scan the airwaves but still quite useful interesting uh, some of these long long spikes like this a lot of times these are just spurs just cause of interference from electronics and all that they're not actually signals this is a signal here that's like the local radio station here and what you do is you get like these peaks here these are sort of like radio stations here and you can actually with like stuff like the SDR sharp the other software from that program uh, from that website you can actually look at these and actually actually listen to the radio station with that software as you can see and at the bottom you get like a waterfall kind of heat map of where where these things are 
Now a lot of times it's not very clear on here, but you can change around with the settings here. Maybe get a bit clearer. You can't do it when you're actually scanning actually. Um, clean this up a bit. And a lot of times with the waterfall you can actually start to figure out what kind of uh, signal has been transmitted by the pattern it makes on there, so it's quite useful. Um, so we've done that. And obviously the greens, the new one, the reds, kind of the uh, the peak value. Okay, right. So what we could do is, I've got a little thing. I'm gonna put my camera on here. Ugh, it's confusing with two screens. And what I've got here is just a little remote control device. See it very well, but that's got like 27 megahertz on it. I have to get out of this where the camera angle is. So, if because I know I, I know the value of that, if I go to here and uh, clear that, and put that down to twenty-five, and then put this one down to say like forty. Oops, clear it first, and. Then, if I start it, boom, boom, boom. fingers crossed, it didn't crash on me. As you can see, we can just get like a background trace. Uh, if I move this into screen, obviously it's not a very good idea to put this <laughs> transmit next to this uh, transmitting antenna, to that receiving antenna, but here we go. And obviously you can see that where it, that's appeared. Yeah, we'll let my finger go. The white line comes down, green line kind of. You can see, but it still holds the peaks. I think in the pro version, you can change all them settings to how long the peaks stay. Let's never do it again over the other one. Oops. Yeah. So like, it detects signals and stuff like that. Good way to like play around, and test these things with one of these controllers. And yeah, stop that. Oops, wrong screen. Let's stop it. And obviously, we could change that to like what, 800. Oops, I should clear it first. 800. And change that to about 820. Oops. What happens if you kind of uh, put it outside your range? Uh, should clear it first. It's 20. Uh, we can start it. Oh, it's going quite slow now. Whoops, wrong screen. No, that's right. No. Here we go. As you can see, that's kind of like I would say, like mobile phone screen. Whoops, that's kind of a uh, kind of messed up there. Sometimes it crashes, <laughs> but anyway, uh, that was doodly doodly uh, helpful. Anyway, okay, bye.